Eins, zwei, drei, vier. Great German Words, a podcast by Eric T. Hansen. Mitläufer. It means someone who walks along with. Mit means with, and Läufer means walker or runner. And so it's it's basically someone who goes along with the crowd or goes along with a popular idea. Mitlaufen is the verb. Mitläufer is the noun, the person who does it. Uh, and it's a word we do not have in English. We should have this word. It's a great word. It it says so much about society today. Now, and really societies in all ages, uh, that it's it's really an important word, Mitläufer. It, it started, I think the, the German had it like as early as like the 17th century or something like that, but it became really interesting after the Second World War when uh, the Allied forces uh, started the re-education of Germans, the denazification of Germans, and they would, uh, uh, they, they would take Nazi party members and, and other people and, and they, would, they would decide in, in courts uh, how much guilt they have with, in what happened by how attached they were to the, the Nazi movement. Uh, and of course, there were, you know, the main guilty parties who were the really the thinkers behind Nazidom. Uh, they were the most guilty. And then the, the fifth, there was a fifth uh, a category, the lowest category, which was people who were just not guilty at all, really. Okay. And then, but the fourth category were called followers in English, followers. And they were the people who followed kind of more or less unthinkingly and just did what they were told to do. And then, of course, you can argue about whether how much guilt they have if they you know worked as guards in you know concentration camps or you know helped you know put made the uh, ss aware of or the sa or whoever was ss i guess aware of where jews were hiding you know how how guilty are they they were just doing what they were expected to do you know they they weren't thinking about it or they didn't have the guts to you know resist and so how guilty are they? You can, you know, you can go back and forth. You say, well, they're most guilty of all because they were the, 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 the great, the great vast majority of people who made the, the Nazi Reich possible. Or you could say, well, you know, they were just doing their duty. But the German word for this is Mitläufer. When I think about the current state of political discussion, political dialogue. In America, as in Germany, all around, all around the Western world, really, uh, I see a lot of Mitläufer. Most people I talk with and who really have strong opinions also, and they, 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 they represent their opinions, they fight for their opinions with me. At some point, I realize, oh man, oh man, everything this guy is saying, I've heard this somewhere before. I, I've heard this, some, some politician said the exact same thing, or it was written in a newspaper, or some guy on Facebook said the same thing. And I realize that what they're doing is just repeating something that someone else said. And that someone else probably was also just repeating something that someone else had said. And that's a sign that they're not thinking about it independently for themselves. They're not looking at this thing and saying, well, let's let's look at the pros and cons here. What they're doing is just looking at someone that they admire or they trust and repeating what he is saying. That's all they're doing. And that's Mitläuferdom. That's Mitlaufen. If you don't look at the pros and cons of something, if you don't look at something neutrally, but you just have an opinion because it seems safe to have that opinion or because someone who you admire has that opinion, then you're a Mitläufer. Of course, I wouldn't be saying it. It doesn't sound good. It sounds, all opinions sound good because, you know, we make them sound good. Uh, then you're a Mitläufer. Um, if you go back to the, to the Nazi period, you know, the, the 30s, uh, you know, probably, I don't know, I, I, at, the end, at the end of the war, I think 80% of all German households had Mein Kampf, the book Mein Kampf in the household. Uh, 80%, I, I'm kind of, that number keep, seems to keep coming up. 80%, you know, we're basically Nazified, we're basically Nazis. And 80% of Germans were not thinking about them themselves. They weren't, you know, looking at the literature and saying, oh, wait a minute, are Jews really that evil? Uh, you know, Jews, uh, there are, a lot of Jews seem to have, you know, department stores, but does that make them evil, owning a department store? Uh, you know, does that, are they subverting German culture just by selling us underwear? Is that, I don't know, does that make sense? But, but everyone around them is saying, yes, Yes, that's they're subverting German culture. They're they're killing us from the inside by selling us underwear in their department stores, and that's why we have to kill them all. Uh, 
And I think a few people thought about it and said, you know, uh, it it sounds logical that these Jews are evil because they're selling us underwear, but but I I don't I don't think that's enough. I I think th there has to be more proof before I I decide to kill all the Jews. But very few people were doing that. Most people were saying, hey. Four neighbors of mine are saying this, so it must be right. It seems safe. I'm not going to find anyone in the near future who will contradict me and make me look stupid by proving to me that I'm wrong because everyone is thinking this, so I will think it too. I'm taking the safe road, and I'm going, and they were midlife, and that's how the Nazi Reich started. That's how it happened. Of course, now, I'm not, I'm not, you know, comparing the Nazi Reich with what's going on today, you know, our, 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 our discussions about... Uh, I don't know, gun laws or, uh, 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 you know, uh, abortion laws or, uh, you know, transphobia or homophobia or, or whatever, all these things that we're talking about today, which are all very important subjects, even if it's a good thing, like I would, you know, I'm against like racism, for example, but if someone comes to me and talks about all and says, this guy's a racist and that guy's a racist, oh, they're all racist and everything is racism. And if you think about it, you know, just it, everything is racism and and I think, well, wait a minute, did this guy think about it himself or is he just repeating what he's heard? And it sounds to me like he's repeating what he's heard. And even if he's right or right to some extent, uh, he's a midlife. You know, we talk in America, we talk about a lot about the polarization of, of politics and of society. Uh, the, left's, the left hates the right and the right hates the left and all that. And, uh, and that's true. But there's something healthy about a society which is divided down the middle 50-50. It seems split to us, but it also means that there is no majority. And sometimes that's a good thing. I, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about the Nazi period. If the anti-Semite faction in Germany had been only 50%, I think that would have been healthy. If 50% of Germans hated the Jews and 50% of the Germans love the Jews or defend the Jews, if it were divided down the middle, then Germany would be fighting about anti-Semitism anti and they would be fighting amongst each other until Hitler got old and gray. But once you hit the tipping point where it gets way beyond the 50%, that's when you get the concentration camps. The thing is about Mitteloifa is that, you know, it's kind of you can't avoid it because, you know, we're expected, especially in democracy, we're expected to have an opinion about everything. We're expected to have an opinion about, uh, you know, taxation or, you know, it's the, 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 the bridge being built over there. Is it a good bridge? Is it a bad bridge? Because we vote for our leaders, we have to have an opinion about every single issue. But at the same time, to earn our money, we have to spend 90% of our time programming software. And that's complex already and so we're, we're already doing that and we're also trying to raise our children and have a relationship you know and, and also have find happiness in some way and yet at the same time we're doing all this and we also have to have a political opinion about every little thing it's easier just to say my friend over there who is a good guy he says you know he says everything is racism so i'm going with him and I think that's natural, but in some cases, we have to wonder, ask ourselves, do we really have our own opinion or are we midlife? And I would say there are some criteria, like for example, if 80% if of everyone agrees about something, then I, 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 I get distrustful. I think that can't be right because, because most subjects like, you know, I don't know, gun control, you know, there is for and against. And if 80% of my friends are against it, then I'm thinking some of them are not thinking for themselves. Some of them are just following the others. I think probably 50-50 is about natural because it's natural for us to see both sides of the story. It's natural for me, if I look at both sides of the story, to agree with one side more than the other one. And it's unnatural for everyone in the nation to agree with the one thing. It's unnatural for, it was unnatural in the 1930s for 80% of the Germans to agree with the Nazi doctrine. That was, that was not people thinking for themselves. They were, they were following, they were midlife. Uh, the other thing is like the pile on, you know, if you write something in Facebook and everyone disagrees with it, really everyone piles on, they're not piling on because they really disagree with you, they're piling on because they think it's safe to do that because everyone else is piling on, it's safe. Another criteria is outrage. We live in an age of outrage where everyone, 
gets really emotional. I mean, it's, it's strange how emotional people get talking about things like, I don't know, feminism. When you get outraged by it, then it seems like you're artificially pumping yourself up emotionally, not because the subject warrants it, but because you kind of like doing it. You kind of get a kick out of it. You like this emotional high. And that's also a form of mitlaufen. I, I look around the world today and I, I find myself often guilty of mitläufe, of going along with, with what people say, um, often what conservatives say. And, and I realize, oh, wait a minute, you know, I don't know. The, the other side also has a point. And, uh, and, and, and it's embarrassing to admit that I may be wrong or that the other side has a point. Uh, it's much better to try to beat them down with some kind of, you know, screwed logic. But... But it seems like the less I am a Mitläufer, the more I understand about the world that we really live in. Eins, zwei, drei, vier. This has been Great German Words. My name is Eric T. Hansen. I'm an American from Hawaii, in fact, but I live in Berlin and I write books in German. For more information about me, visit ethansen.com. And for more information about my micro publisher, Hula Inc., visit hulainc.com. The jingle is by Christoph Shading. Thanks, Christoph. Great German Words is also available on YouTube. Thanks for listening, and thanks for your support.